The next issue to address in this mobile app is the Buy Now link. Links work perfectly well on mobile browsers, of course. They have to. They're fundamental to the web, but they do have two downsides. One problem is that some links are hard to click. The anchor tag is an inline element, and without styling, it will take up a minimum amount of space. And they can be just hard to push just right if you're using fingers on a phone screen. The other disadvantage is that they do make it look like we're in a web browser instead of an application. Now, as we saw in the last module, it's easy to transform a link into a button. All I need to do is come into my anchor tag and give it a data role of button. I'm also going to give it a theme so that it stands out just a little bit. So with those two changes, I can come back to the browser. Let's refresh it and open it up. And voila, I have a button, although the text doesn't really fit on that button. In some scenarios, if you are space constrained, what you can do is make a mini button, which is just data-mini equals true. And what the theme will do behind the scene is use a slightly smaller font for that button, which just might allow it to fit into some places. Now, a mini button is shorter than a regular button, but it's still going to be just as wide because by default, buttons will take up as much horizontal space as possible. In fact, if I flip this over into landscape mode, you can see the buy now button stretches to the edge of the screen, or rather to the edge of its container, which is a column inside of the grid that we built. And if that's not the behavior that I want, I can make an inline button. So I can say data dash inline equals true. And now the button will only take up as much horizontal space as it needs. And that also gives you the ability to stack buttons beside each other if there's enough space. Also, buttons can have icons. If you search the jQuery mobile site for the word icon, you'll find the 20 or so icons provided by jQuery mobile out of the box. When I want to use an icon, I just need to set the data-icon attribute. I'll set that equal to check, which should be a check mark. And now we will refresh this browser and take a look. And by default, that icon position will be on the left side. And just so you know, there are icons for every set of themes. So if I change this theme to the E theme, we'll see how the icon can also change color and be themed appropriately. And let's also set the data dash icon position. You can set this to left, top, bottom. We'll also try to the right. There's also a no text icon positioning, which means literally the button will have no text. That's actually, if you remember how we placed the little home icon here at the top of the page. But with those changes in effect, let's come back and refresh. And now we have a yellow button, a yellow icon, and the icon is on the right-hand side of that button. Finally, you can group buttons both horizontally and vertically. A horizontal grouping is somewhat similar to what the nav bar is doing here. But let me also come in here. Let's get rid of the inline attribute. And let's say we wanted to stack two buttons on top of each other. And we'll give them different themes just so they can appear a little bit differently. One can be E, one can be B. And if I refresh this page and we look at it now, there's the two buttons on top of each other. Of course, with the icon, now we don't have enough room for the text. So we'd have to sacrifice one or the other there. But you'll notice there's space between the buttons and they look like two individual buttons. If I want to group them together, all I need is a containing element. So let's do this trick again. Control K, Control S to surround with some HTML which will be a div, and I'll give that surrounding div a data-role equal to control group. Save this and let's refresh one more time. And now you can see those buttons form a grouping of two buttons. There's no margin between the two, and the inside corners aren't rounded.